It's a rainy night in Connecticut, and this 40-year-old guy thinks he's going to cuddle in bed with a 13-year-old girl named Bailey. But in a few minutes, 40-year-old John Dupay will find out that this hookup has no happy ending. Dupay is the latest monster we've caught in our all-new investigative segment, Hanson vs. Predator. We're working with the Fairfield, Connecticut Police and the online predator watchdog group, Tetrad Corps. They post profiles on apps like Whisper using innocuous pictures of actual underage girls. We're protecting their identities. Dupay contacts not one, but two of our decoys. One we'll call Brittany and the other Bailey hoping to strike up a sexual relationship. This phone call will creep you out. Hello. Hey, you. Hey, baby. He appears to be so desperate, he would risk a long prison sentence for a night with a 13-year-old. The text messages he sends are even more disturbing. He calls the youngster baby. Dupay likes to be called Boo. Hey, Boo. I'm all fresh from the shower. Hmm. I wish I smell your body, baby. Baby, I think it's gonna be amazing for me and you when our bodies are touching and I'm inside you and we're kissing, OMG. Online, Dupay uses fake names like John Santoro and Johnny Connecticut. He's a former mail carrier and says he worked as a package handler at UPS. He claims he's 30, but he's actually 40. He calls Bailey from his cell phone. Hello. Hey, boo, where are you? I'm outside. More than a dozen hidden cameras throughout the Stinghouse capture his every move. Our fence cam captures him going to the door with a bag of gifts. Our decoy is a 19-year-old theater student who could easily pass for 13. She takes him inside where our kitchen cam records the conversation and my confrontation. What did you bring? Presents. What do you got? Show me. Nice. What kind is it? Thank you. She asked for snacks, and he's more than happy to oblige. A bag of chips, a caramel-covered chocolate bar, and a giant bottle of iced tea. It's so nice to finally see you. This, What's up? this is crazy. Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm really nervous. Why? I don't know, I've never done this. Have you? No. Nope. So what do you want to do? A hug? Uh, I don't know. Hey, Boo. Hey. Oh. You have a seat right around that stool right there for me, please. No, right there, please have a seat. Okay. Right there. Set the phone down, please. What is your plan here tonight? Just hang out, watch football? Hang out and watch football with whom? With her. Who's her? With Bailey. And do you know how old Bailey is? She's 14. 14? Mm-hmm. She told you she's 13. Not that that matters. Mm -hmm. How old are you? 30. 30. Dupay is lying. We both know he's really 40. And what he doesn't know is that I have all the transcripts of his sordid conversations with minors. But I'm curious to see if he'll cop to his intentions. And why would you at 30 think it would be okay to hang out with a 13-year-old girl home alone? I mean, we just hit it off, friends. You hit it off with a 13-year-old girl? Just, we were just talking. Just talking? Mm -hmm. Well, now you're here. This is more than talk. I know, we just came to hang out. You know, and I brought... What, get a hug? And watch football. Watch football? Yep. Who's playing tonight? Steelers and the Ravens. I had no intentions with nothing. No intentions of... Nope. So what do you do at UPS? I was a package handler. Package handler. You're not there anymore? No. What do you do now? Um, nothing. Besides go online and try to talk to young girls? I don't try to talk to... I mean, I just try to find a girl to talk to and hang out, whatever. And how many times have you done this with somebody who's 13, 14 years old? Never. Never talked to another nope. girl who said she was 13? No. Nope. Well, who's Brittany? Who's Brittany? That was the other girl you were talking to. What was this? Within the last few weeks. So you say to Bailey on Whisper that you're 30, how old are you? She says 13. You say, 
You're not 13 in that pick. Yes, I'll be 14 next month. That's pretty clear. You remember that, right? Mm-hmm. You do. This does not look very good for you, John. The chat, the appearance, the dark chocolate. Did you bring condoms with no. you? Not in your pockets? No. But you see how this looks. Absolutely, I mean. Why don't you just tell me what you were really up to? Just to hang out, get to know her, you know? Get and to know her? Yeah. And if you were the parent of a 13-year-old girl, would you be comfortable with that? I mean, it depends how, like, I mean, if I'm a good person, you know, like. Yeah, but typically good people don't meet strangers online, talk about sex, and then go over to visit, and within three minutes, ask for a hug. I mean, all they did was just ask for, you know, a hello hug, that was it. With a 13-year-old girl. Walked right in the house. Well, she told me to come in. Does that make it right? Knowing that she's 13? Oh, I would never, I wouldn't have never just walked in, you know, without talking to her, you know, without getting her okay. Now, you talked about spending the night here tonight. Well, Yes or no? It depended, you know, like, if she had to wake up in the morning, you know, like, if I was going to stay did, here. Did she have to go to school? She said she didn't have to go to school today. I mean, tomorrow. So you could just spend the night and hang out with a 13-year-old girl. That's cool. Well, I mean, I didn't plan on it. You talked about it? I mean, I was going to leave after the football game. Unless you spent the night. No, I didn't plan on spending the night. Well, you talked about having cannolis, a little dinner. Yeah. It sounds like you were going to have a special little night with your 13-year-old date. I mean, all I was doing was just coming here to watch the game. You tried to solicit a 13-year-old girl online using graphic sexual language. What do you think should happen to you? Sir, I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm a bad guy. The pickup line John Dupay used to seduce a 13-year-old girl will turn your stomach. You tell her, I would love to be the first guy to make you blank if you wanted me to, and I wanted to. Feel me inside you, baby. Has that line ever worked for you before? No. Then why do you do that now? There was no, I mean. Well, what am I to make of this? I, there was no intentions made by it. That shows clear intent. He obviously flunked Don Juan 101. Remember, this is the same guy who made that creepy phone call. He then tries a different and equally disgusting approach, bragging about his mad party skills. And then you talk about that you and a bunch of people snuck into a mansion and partied for days. Where was that mansion? Um, that was a while ago. How long ago? Maybe eight, nine years ago. Oh, so it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. How does this look? How does that look? John, you tell me, how does it look? If you were me, what would you think? That I honestly made a mistake. That you made a mistake. Well, that's true. And how would you define that mistake? Not to talk to girls like me online. <laughs> or try to come over and have sex with them. I wasn't trying to come over and have sex with John, them. John, let me read it again. I mean, what'd you mean by that? that? Sounds like sex to me. I was just playing with her, seeing. Just playing with her. I'm not playing with her, but, you know, just seeing, like, where she was, you know, like... She was 13. I mean, I'd never had sex with her. I mean, I didn't plan on coming here to have well, sex with her. Well, not tonight, because I walked in. And I didn't plan on it. You didn't plan on it? Come on, you talked about it. Like, that wasn't my intentions. I talked to her all day today about just coming over, watching the game, and just hanging out. Salad. About what? You talked about salads. About like food and stuff? Yes. Yeah, while we're watching the game. This is a whole different kind of food here that you're talking about. So what do you think should happen to you, John? You're in a bit of a fix here. I'm terribly sorry, sir. 
Well, there's something you need to know, and that is I'm Chris Hansen, and this is an investigation called Hansen versus Predator. The look on Dupay's face says it all. Sir, if you want to leave, you should go out that door right there. He knows what happens next. Police come over. And weapons? He's unarmed and put into the back of an unmarked police car. Our dash cam shows him being hauled off to police headquarters where he's booked, fingerprinted, and poses for a mugshot. Just initial again and sign if you're willing to talk to us. In the interrogation room, he cries as he signs away his right to remain silent. His forehead is wrinkled with worry as he's about to speak to detectives. She's a little girl. Do you see that in the pictures? Do you see she's a little girl? Look. If she wanted to have sex tonight, would you have? No. I swear on my little boy, I wasn't going to have sex with her. I really wasn't. Well, then uh, help us understand this. You want her to feel you inside her. I mean, I know what that means to me. <laughs> I know. I should never have said no like that. Watch closely, and you'll see a classic case of good cop, bad cop in action. And what would have stopped you if she was all over you? I would have just told her I can't do it. You told Chris Hansen you were going to spend the night. No, I was going to get picked back up. Tonight? Yep. By sitting here and bullshitting us, which we're not believing, obviously, that you're there to watch a football game is crap. So you were lying in the text messages? Huh? Were you lying to her in the text messages then? I wasn't going to have sex with her. I don't even know why I said those things. He said them in the text, and that evidence was so overwhelming, Dupay pleaded guilty to three felony counts. Attempted second-degree sexual assault, attempted risk of injury to a minor, and attempting to entice a minor in an obscene act. I was in the other room watching the monitor as John comes in, and we see this from time to time. The, the potential predator comes in, almost swoops in on the decoy, and it, it never fails to creep me out. At his court appearance, other defendants were taunting him. Apparently, even the most hardened criminals think he crossed the line. Maybe an indication of what he can expect in prison. His sentence, eight years, suspended after serving three. He also must register as a sex offender. The chats, in many cases, very graphic. Were you surprised at how graphic these guys got? Oh, it, it, tremendously surprised. Anybody who reads that and anybody who understands what's actually taking place and doesn't get sick to their stomach, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, it is horrible dialogue that's occurring with children, and they know that they're children. For now, Dupay is locked up. The streets of Connecticut are a little safer 